with someone. Okay. Like me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from. I was born in Venda. I grew up in Pretoria. Home is Pretoria. Mm-hmm. I'm studying at UWC in become finance. Mm-hmm. My final year. So, what do I like doing for fun? Yeah. Um, actually, I just like um, going out, you know, with my friends, spending some quality time with my friends. If not, if I'm indoors, I have love. Um, mm. I love just chilling, you know. Mm. So, so you just for the vibes. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's that's interesting. So, how is before we get into the serious thing? How is you know um, your exams going, or how did your exam go? If you you know you've done writing. Yeah, I don't know why it was hectic for me. You know, there were um, two modules that I didn't expect to qualify for mm. due to the fact that I had so much distraction when I was approved when when we came into second semester because I. That's when I just launched my business. Mm. Okay. School and business was one of the most challenging things because the business is still new. Mm. It's me on the ground and stuff, you know, and I was operating um, five days a week. Wow. So you struggled with multitasking with, you know, your schoolwork and your business. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because uh, the moment I'm up from morning, I'm probably waking up until 10 or 11, depending on the demand on the day. Mm-hmm. From mm-hmm. there, you're exhausted because you were up the whole day, you know, it becomes yeah. like, you know, studying. Mm-hmm. Okay, but did you find the balance at least now? I don't know. It's you know, it's just by God's grace because there are to be honest with you, there are two there are two modules that I didn't even write, temp test two and sick mm. test. Yeah, but I qualified. I don't know how. <laughs> That's interesting. I hope things go well for you. Nah, the moment I qualified, I made sure that at least I put them. Oh, you qualify, you still have to write. I've written them. And then it went well. I yeah, hope. I'm confident. Okay, that's good. That's good. No, I, I'm glad you survived the semester. Second semester is always the worst one. Too much. Mm. Okay, now let's get to your business and getting to know what your business is about. Can you kindly introduce to us um, your social enterprise? What is it about? What do you do? When did you start? How did you start? Where do you operate? All those things. Mm. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, my business it's called Sanish Palace. Mm-hmm. It was inspired by a couple of businesses from Pretoria, where mm. I come from. You know, um, I grew up going to a place called Patro Palace, mm. some DBT Pretoria, you know, Kota Joe and stuff. Mm. So, it was highly influenced by the culture also from Pretoria, you mm-hmm. know, because most of the things that I do and the food that I'm pushing, it's what we call Sipito reggae culture from where I come from back home, you know. Yeah. So I've always wanted to open this business, but it was just a matter of time and space. You know, I uh-huh. think 2019. I tried, but um, I just didn't have the courage to, you know, and by God's grace this year, I managed to register it and start it. Mm -hmm. um, So technically my business or why I wanted to in the beginning, even when I started it, it was because I wanted to Open this business um, on campus, you know. Yeah. I wanted to inter- to, to operate this business on, on campus. It's a fast food mm-hmm. uh, that we offer 
food that is unique, you know, in Cape yeah. Town, you usually find caspies, you usually find, um, you know, food that favors the Western culture. Mm, mm. So there was just that lack within the market of saying that there is this type of food. There are people from where I come from. There are people from here who would like to taste the food from where I come from. So mm. I, um, something had to be done to bridge into the gap, in between the gap that was there, you know. So I saw an opportunity in the market and I that's when I decided to even try and push more, you know. Mm. And from there, that's when after doing the paperwork of registering the company and opening the bank accounts, um, SARS, um, you know, compliance also, I then followed up with um, buying a couple of equipments because already I had been saving. So mm. because I knew what I wanted to do you know, um, second semester when we reopened um, on the first week of, of, of August. That's when I launched the comp. I, that's when I launched the business, you know. But mm. it was pretty hard. It was pretty hard and challenging because also it was not just a matter of starting, you know, you need to make sure that you have the taste right, you have the ingredients right, you have the presentation right, you have the marketing strategy right, you know. Mm. Uh, so with laying everything down, you know, you must make sure that also you have the recipe right because it might look presentable but tasteless. So it might look tasteful but not presentable. So you must find a balance in between. And also, it's also challenging being in an environment where the community is more dominated by halal people or people that that eat halal or that that, that 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 prefer halal restaurants because you're in a color dominated environment you are in a space where you have muslims and indians that don't just eat from everywhere you know and they eat halal food so one of the challenges you'd face in this environment is that also to be registered on campus you need to make sure that you are halal meaning that you don't sell pork um you don't buy from suppliers outside of halal um the impact we're trying to have we're trying to um solve the impact of saying that um this type of market it's a market that is not yet tapped in so there is a lack in terms of that we understand so we are bridging in into that and then we also have a, an economic impact into it because um, we are enriching lives and we are making sure that uh, we elevate standard of living, you know, because we do have employees, we do have people that we have employed from the local community wow. in Bella that are assisting us and of mm -hmm. which we are all paying them a minimum of 3.5 per month, meaning mm -hmm. that we are feeding families there are families that are being fed through Sunnis Palace. You know, there are people who are well taken care of. And also, um, I do on a weekly basis, you know, we do go out and feed people mm -hmm. once, oh. yeah, two times in, in, in a month. So mm -hmm. we do go out and feed people who are staying in the streets, you know, just mm -hmm. to um, touch and bless those who can't that's beautiful that's beautiful so how many people so far um are, are working for for your for, for your business oh okay cool so i have two drivers that drive the scooters for deliveries because we deliver everywhere around bella wow uh, then i have four employees that work in the kitchen that is beautiful that is beautiful that's beautiful yeah. work there so what is your challenge what is the challenge that you have running your business um some of the challenges that you would experience um let's say for instance um days are not the same within the month um you understand the dynamics of business that there are times where there are weeks where it would be on the peak then there are weeks where it would just be down um 
And the challenge is, is that sometimes you would prep food, you know, with high expectations of saying that, okay, maybe today we're going to generate more money and you make low sales, meaning that the food is highly likely to get spoiled. Maybe let's say it's a Saturday because we don't work on Sunday and Monday, meaning that you have two days where you're not working. What's going to happen to the food? You lose out to food. Um, mm -hmm. There are challenges that you would experience uh, with the bikes, with the motorbikes. You know, it might break down while you have mm -hmm. all that causes delays into delivering. If you, if also we're at a peak, because sometimes we do get over, on a good day, we get 200, 300 orders um mm -hmm. a day meaning that um when there is high volume and you do not have efficient equipment to keep up with the demand you are going to delay with delay you face challenges of complaints and people saying that they've been waiting for over an hour to get their food but due to high volume you understand so it's a challenge of balancing the dynamics and each day comes with its own different challenges you know mm -hmm. yeah that's that's interesting so if maybe someone is listening um who probably is an investor stakeholder and they're asking what is it that your business right now needs to you know reach the heights where you think it can um what do we need um i think more than anything what we need we need proper equipment you know because mm -hmm proper equipment, it helps us to be able to reach or to be able to meet the quantity demand because the higher the demand, you tend to focus more on mass distribution than releasing quality food that brought people or that brought their attention to the business, you understand? So if we can be able to have equipments that helps us to be more efficient, that could help the business grow more because the higher the demand we are also able to produce high quality food that is proper at a high demand and also um we need trailers you know because at the moment i'm operating from home so mm. if i'm operating from home and i'm able to do such kind of numbers of 400 orders a day how much more could I be able to do if I'm at a location that um, we it's student dominated because my target market is student highly. You understand? So mm -hmm. if I want to get a trailer and operate nearer, um, I feel like that could also put more exposure into the business. It could help it grow even using word of mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel so like it's getting a different place to operate, basically. Yeah, you know, just just expanding it, you know, growing and allowing ourselves to to grow. Get if I could get a trade line operate near a campus, you mm. know, residences. I feel like that could help us, you know. Mm. Are yeah. there any um, sort of businesses that operate within the proximity of the campus? Yeah, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of businesses, there are a lot of trailers and containers that are there, you know, mm. that are operating um, uh, within that space that we want to to penetrate. I think that's a market mm. I'm looking forward to penetrate in the beginning of the year. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And um, I was just having a conversation with one of the people that were part of this program. Mm. about the um, support that the university gives to studentpreneurs because, you know, we had to cancel the event because there wasn't much support from the university yeah. with regards to this spe specific program. Yeah. Um, what is it that you want to see from your institution when it comes to um, supporting student enterprises? Um, no, I mean, would like to see them believing and investing more into us, you know, because at the end of the day, we are here to learn and get equipped um, to be successful business owners. You know, we don't want, I don't think there's anyone who has an ambition to run a plaza shop for the rest of their lives. You know, we want mm. to become um, big entities. So with the institution giving us such opportunities, I feel like it would open up uh, a lot of doors for us and more opportunities for us because uh, the UWC community on its own, it's an, it's an economy, 
on its own that can help you uh, build a sustainable business at a level. Yeah. yeah. So giving us such an opportunity just to operate within the UWC community, I feel like it would really empower us as young entrepreneurs, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So this is a pledge to the University of Western Cape to support student enterprises um, that you, because I think you're doing a great job, honestly, if um, we were just mentioning the fact that the unemployment rate is very, very high. Mm. And um, this is one way to solve the unemployment rate, basically, because there are certain people that you are employing mm -hmm. and, you know, that you are feeding families basically through it, the initiative or through your business. Mm -hmm. And it's important because uh, it, with the high in, uh, unemployment rate, then that means that it's securing a job. It's on its own. It's hard. And we need people like you. Um, who have businesses to go out there and and start businesses and run business because I don't think business is for everyone, but people that's like you are the ones that keep the economy going. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's 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 really hard, you know. Um, it's really hard. It needs you to be resilient. It needs you to be um, strong mentally because there are challenges and there are days where it would really hit you home, you know, because like I said, days are not the same. There are days where I could literally get 10 orders. You must mm. understand that's part of the process. That's part of business. You know, mm. it's part of the challenges and the ups and downs. But then that's why we always make sure that at a day when we're at a peak, you capitalize so that um, whatever you generate at your peak, it sustains the day so where you're not making money, you know? Mm. Yeah, mm. so it's 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 a um, mind game you know definitely definitely okay so we're gonna do a quick mini challenge um i just want to see how your presenting skills or pitch skills are uh the last session we did was on how to pitch a business so i want to see um how good or how effective um is your pitching skill so you're gonna pitch your business in 30 seconds Tell us about your business, what you sell, what to find you, whatever that you want to tell us. Um, it's always proven. It's all. It's proven that um, the first thirty seconds that's where in you can grab people's attention. But if you really lose them in the first thirty seconds, it's gonna be hard for them to pick up um, the attention spam. So the first the first thirty seconds is quite important. So in thirty seconds, you're gonna tell us about your business. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, three, two, one, let's start. Um, hi, um, my name is Sane Romnenyewa. I am the owner and the founder of Sane's Palace. Sane's Palace, it is a food outlet that operates within um, the Bella community. We are found at Bella 2, 13 Fluid. Um, we sell different variety of food, such as quarters, um, uh, full chickens, and we are a young business that has just started and we have <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> okay. So um just a uh, um feedback now. So with the, when you're pitching a business um with within 30 seconds, uh, at this point we don't want to know your name at this point, right? Um, you need to grab my attention with um, what your business is about, what you do. And mm. I need to be like, oh, okay. So after you're presenting, that's when I can say, wait, what's your name? Mm. So in the beginning, I don't, I'm not really interested in, in your name as someone who's listening. Mm. Um, I, I want to hear the most important things. I run this enterprise and mm. this is what we do. Um, you can also mention the points of, you know, having people that you're feeding and all of that, because those are like winning points, kind of like that mm. gets people's attention. Um, that gets people to like, oh, okay. I want to hear about more about what you do. So you want to grab people's attention immediately. So you you touch on to the most important things first and um, the names and all of those where you are doing your business. Well, where you're doing a business is also important. Like where is it located in, in, your, mm. in your case? It's also important. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so far so good. Um, there's still room to improve. Um, so we are about to conclude, but before we conclude, um, I just want uh, I want to hear from you what um, if an investor. Oh, we did we did ask this question, right? If an mm. investor is listening and he yeah. said you need equipment. Okay, cool. Mm. We'll answer that question. So you need equipment and you need capital, right? Mm. Okay, capital. Can you elaborate on what the capital is going to be used on? Although you did mention some of the things, but just for this um, conversation's sake. Oh, okay, cool. So the capital could be, I will inject it into, you know, um, buying a trailer, mm-hmm. you know, um, in order for us to be able to move from where we are operating to the location that um, it's student dominant and we'll use it on buying, um, you know, more deep fryers, you know, mm-hmm. gas fryers due to the fact that you really can't rely on electrical appliances yeah. um, due to load shedding and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so would we'll use it on buying fridges, you know, for refrigerating the um, food that we, 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 we prepare, you know, because um, we do not have enough and food gets spoiled, you know. So having to buy like equipments like that, you know, um, deep fryers, um, air fryers, um, you know, also the packaging, you know, one, two, two, mm. standard of our packaging, you know, just to make it look more attractive, you know. Mm would also inject the money into marketing, you know, just to be able to grow and reach more people. Um, mm. Yeah, I think those are the most important things, you know, more especially if you can get equipment and mm. we get them, um, we change the location to the location that we we were looking forward to, I felt like that would really help the business grow. Mm, mm. That's 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 definitely great. And um, any um, other thing that you want to say about the program, or you know, just feedback as well. Um, the program it's okay, it's fine. It you know it helps us navigate our way through. Um, mm-hmm. into this um, space of entrepreneurship, you know, at, it's eye-opening, it's enlightening. Um, I feel like one gets to learn a lot, you know, and more especially even, you know, it's giving us exposure out there and it's training us to be confident in ourselves and be able to be, um, you know, like for instance, today, you know, I learned on, you know, how to improve my pitching skills, you know, presenting yourself out there, you know, so it's molding us and building us, you know, to be um, successful business men and women out there. Uh-huh. So I feel like it is, it is what we need as young people, um, uh, you know, encouragement and uh, mm. motivation, you know, that we, we're really not our, on our own as, as we are trying to navigate our way to be successful within this field of entrepreneurship because it's really hard and difficult, you know. So when you get entities like this that tend to support you, um, we tend to feel encouraged, you know, to continue to pursue and with hopes that we'll overtake and recover. Mm. That's, yeah. that's great. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I know we struggled so much with, um, you know, finishing this interview, but I think it was worth it. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for coming through and sharing what you do. Keep doing what you do um, and definitely hoping for the best for your business and with your studies. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate it. Yeah, finally, at least we're done now. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> also, if I may ask, 